your hands and say, Tyro, Tyro, you are enough. Dolly Parton's called uh, It Was Jesus or something. Anybody heard that song? Or, okay, I guess nobody else is listening to K-Love but me. Amen. But uh, it was beautiful. I'm sure we're going to be singing that song in a little while. And it was just uh, it was beautiful. And uh, songs like Jaira and It Was Jesus pull you straight into the heart of God. And and I think we desperately need a God encounter. I don't know about you, I need a God encounter. And maybe your fire is not what it once was. Maybe it's time to rekindle the fire, amen? Our scripture today is taken from 2 Thessalonians, the third chapter, verses one through five. The apostle Paul writes, finally, brethren, pray for us that the word of the Lord may run swiftly and be glorified just as it is with you and that we may be delivered from unreasonable and wicked men. For not all have faith, but the Lord is faithful, who will establish you and guard you from the evil one. And we have confidence in the Lord concerning you both, that you do and will do the things we commanded you. Now may the Lord direct your hearts into the love of God and into the patience of Christ. Father, we thank you that you are more than enough more than enough as an intercessor, more than enough as a healer, more than enough as a way maker, a provider you are, more than enough to give us peace of mind. God, you are more than enough to unify, Lord, a fractured state, a fractured body. You are more than enough. And so God, we ask you to be glorified in Christ's name, amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. You know, at the end of our morning worship services, at the end of our Bible studies, at the end of our morning manor broadcast, at the end of our life groups, we ask people, does anyone have a prayer request? Sometimes people would like to disclose what they would actually want you to pray for them about, and sometimes people hold things close to their heart. They keep them clandestine so that nobody else knows. But how many of you agree that everyone needs prayer? We all need prayer. You know, the Bible says that the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. You know, prayer has much 
power. And what is prayer? Prayer is the designated means of communing with God. It's the way we talk to God. But some people believe that prayer is a monologue. Remember when Johnny Carson used to do his monologue and he would come out and they would say, here's Johnny. And Johnny would come out and Johnny would talk for a long time. But watch this. Prayer is not like that. Prayer is not a monologue. Prayer is a dialogue. When you talk to God, God talks to you. Now, some people believe that God doesn't talk today, but I'm a firm believer that God is always speaking. God is always talking, but maybe we are not listening. Now, remember, God gave us one mouth and two ears. That means we ought to listen twice as much as we talk. You know, and so I believe that we should... Uh, embrace the whole discipline of prayer. You know, sometimes we ask people to pray for us and sometimes we don't. You know, many of us remember being children and the prayers that we had when we were children. So, come on, let's recite this together. Now I lay me what? I pray the Lord my and if I should die before I I pray the Lord my but many of us are also familiar with the Lord's Prayer taken from Matthew, the ninth chapter, 6th chapter, verse 9 through 13. And it says, after this manner, therefore pray, our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, what? In earth as it is in heaven, give us this day our daily bread and forgive us of our debts as we forgive our debtors and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from what? evil for thine is the kingdom the power and the glory forever amen now in that prayer that jesus taught us the model prayer it said deliver us from evil now you would wonder why christians have to be delivered from evil if we are as righteous as we say we are i believe this we need to be delivered from evil because there's still some evil in us is that right and if you're not careful, you'll go back to the evil that you once left. You know, the Bible says in Proverbs that a dog sometimes returns to its own vomit. You know, a dog is comfortable eating vomit. A dog believes that a, a vomit is actually a good meal. And sometimes after you've been in the church for so long, you can start believing that vomit is actually a good thing as well. So let's take a look at this text and see what Paul has to say to us. Our sermon today is prayers needed. Finally, brethren, pray for us that the word of the Lord may run swiftly and be glorified just as it is with you, and that we may be delivered from unreasonable and wicked men. For not all have the faith, but the Lord is Faithful. Look what Paul said. The Lord is faithful, who will establish you and guard you from the evil one. Now watch this. I need to be guarded from evil because there's an evil one that's trying to take me out. And we have confidence in the Lord concerning you both now. Now may the Lord direct your hearts into the love of God and into the patience of Christ. Now look at this because remember that Paul is the apostle to the Gentile world. Paul is the one that created all the doctrine that we have in the New Testament church. But Paul asked the people that were following him to pray for him. You know what this tells me that you're never too big to need prayer. You're never in a position where you're so strong that you don't need prayer. Everybody needs prayer. Now, you know, pray that the ministry that we have, Paul said, would be effective. Paul asked for prayer for his ministry team. He said, pray that the word would be productive. You know, the word has been productive in the Thessalonians, but Paul is saying, look, I'm doing ministry in other places, and I need you to pray for me. So Paul asked them to pray for him. Now, if Paul asked for prayer, how many of you agree that I should ask for prayer sometimes too? I need prayer. Paul asked them to pray. And what is prayer? Point A, prayer is communicating with God. Now, some people believe that prayer has to be on your knees, and some people believe that prayer has to be all night, and some people believe that prayer has to be in tongues. You know what? I don't care how you talk to him. Just talk to him. Talk to him, because if you have a relationship with someone, you're going to want to talk to him, and prayer is communicating with God. 
Now, how is prayer communicating with God? Prayer is speaking from our heart to the heart of the Heavenly Father. It is saying, God, this is going on in my life. But remember this, that God is omniscient and there is nothing going on in your life that God does not already know. And so I'm not praying to inform God. I'm praying so that God would know that he is my source. He is the strength of my life. He is the source of my supply. And so point B, prayer is not a monologue. Prayer is not one. Prayer is a dialogue. Prayer is two. It's got to be two people in this relationship. And so I can't just be talking to God and he's never speaking to me. And God can't just be speaking to me, and I'm never talking to him. Prayer is a dialogue. Prayer is a dialogue, and we need to remember that. Now, I am talking to God, and God is talking to me. Now, some people believe that God doesn't talk to people. And sometimes you'll hear me say, the Lord told me this, and the Lord spoke to me. And sometimes people say, oh, God, there's somebody that's talking about the Lord speaks to them. I want you to know he walks with me, and he talks with me, and he tells me how that I'm his own, and the joy we share as we tarry there, none other has ever known. And I believe this, you might not be able to come to the garden with other people. At some point, you're going to have to learn how to come to the garden alone while the dew drops are still on the roses. Come to the garden of prayer. Now, I am talking to God and God is talking to me. And you know what? Paul constantly asked Christians to pray for him. Romans, the 15th chapter, verse 30 says this. Now, I beg you, brethren, through the Lord Jesus Christ and through the love of the Spirit that you strive together with me in prayer to God for me. Paul said that prayer is a type of striving. He said that you would strive together together in prayer with me to God. Ephesians, the sixth chapter, verse 18. Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit, watchful to this end with all perseverance and supplication for all the saints and for me that utterance may be given to me that I may open my mouth to make known the mystery of the gospel. Ephesians, the sixth chapter, verse 18 and 19, tells me that prayer makes me bold. It gives me boldness. And so not only do I need people to pray for me that I would be strong spiritually, but I also need prayer so that I would be bold to carry this gospel to the whole world. The Bible says in Acts, the first chapter, verse 8, but you shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. Paul asked for prayer. Philippians, the first chapter, verse 19, says this, For I know that this will turn out for my deliverance through your prayer and the supply of the Spirit of Jesus Christ. Now, look at that. Paul said that prayer has the ability to turn out for his deliverance. So do you know what? When we start praying for people, what we are actually doing is turning their deliverance for them. We are actually turning deliverance on. And somebody in here today needs healing. And you know what? When we pray, we are turning their deliverance towards them. Somebody needs financial breakthrough. And when we break through and pray, what we're doing is turning their deliverance toward them. And so when we say, Father, I stretch my hand to thee, what we are doing is actually turning someone's deliverance toward them. And then we see in Colossians, the fourth chapter, verse 3, Meanwhile, praying also for us that God would open to us a door for the word to speak the mystery of Christ for which I am also in chains. So I have a couple of points here. Point C, prayer will deliver. In Philippians of verse, chapter verse 19, Paul said that prayer can deliver. And I believe that prayers can make a drug addict stop being a drug addict. Prayers can make a, you know, a, a lesbian stop being a lesbian. Prayers can make a homosexual stop being a homosexual. Prayer changes things. Watch this. Prayer has the ability to change the situations. And maybe one of the reasons that we never see deliverance is because nobody wants to pray. But the Bible says, if my people who are called by my name would humble themselves 
and pray. So what does that tell me? That Second Chronicles seven fourteen, I believe. He said, if my people who are called by my name would humble themselves and pray. You know what it takes? Prayer takes humility. Prayer takes humility. If my people who are called by my name, if Christians would humble themselves and pray, prayer takes humility. And you know what? When I'm praying, prayer takes humility and I say I have no ability. Prayer takes humility and I say I have no ability. And so I have no ability to live right on my own. I have no ability to keep myself. I have no ability to leave that bad habit alone. So somebody please pray for me. Pray for me. And you know, Dorothy Norwood said, my mother prayed for me, had me on her mind, took the time to pray for me. I'm so glad she prayed. I'm so glad she prayed. I'm so glad she prayed for me. So point C, prayer will deliver. And then point D, prayer will open doors because Colossians, the fourth chapter, verse three says this, meanwhile, praying for us that God would open to us a door. You know, there are a lot of doors that have been locked in your life, but if you just pray about those doors, if the people who are linked to you would pray about those doors. You know what I saw in this pandemic? I saw people who couldn't get a house, and the saints of God began to pray and believe God that God would open doors that no man could shut and shut doors that no man can open. Can he give you a job when the economy is going down? Yes, he can. Because the effectual, fervent prayer of righteous people avail much. Now, what would happen if the people of God just began to pray and pray and pray? And what would happen if we became intercessors? Somebody's going to get a house. You know what? Prayer can make a woman that's barren have a baby. Do you hear me? Prayer can make a wayward husband, an alcoholic, stop being an alcoholic. I'll tell you this. I was on a and campus, and I was, you know, filled with the Spirit. I was walking in the deliverance power. I went to Evangel Fellowship. I was a part of United Christian Fellowship. And one day, me and some other guys, we were on our way to morning prayer. And on our way to morning prayer, we met a wino. We met a wino, and I said, Lord, have mercy. Here's wino, and who drinks at 6 o'clock in the morning when folk are going to prayer? Maybe he wasn't getting up. Maybe he was coming in, all right? But he was out there at Harrison Auditorium at the basement drinking some liquor, and I had heard the word of the Lord saying, you can speak to situations, and situations can change. And so we went up to the guy, and we said, in the name of Jesus, We rebuke that spirit of alcoholism, and we set you free right now. Y'all, what happened scared me to death. The wino poured out the alcohol. Now, how many of you know that had to be God? Because ain't no no alcoholic pouring out no alcohol. Ain't no drug addict giving up no crack. Ain't no hoe stop running the street. Do you hear me? But God can do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we can ask or think. How many of y'all know that we need some deliverance up in here? We need some deliverance. And watch this. It's not just other folk that's needing deliverance. But the first person in the deliverance line, watch this. You know, there's churches called Church of Deliverance, Church of Breakthrough. You know, sanctified churches have long names. First Church of Deliverance of the Living God and stuff like that. Now, watch this. And sometimes we, we, we call that, we laughing at that. But, baby, all of us need deliverance. And some people will stay on an altar all night long to get their deliverance, to get their breakthrough. And maybe it doesn't take for you what it takes for me. But when the choir is up singing, Jaira, you are more than enough, it makes me want to throw my hands up in the air and tell the Lord, thank you. And when Carl is saying, you ought to run and tell that, do you know that there are folk that have been in all kinds of bondages in this room, but God delivered them, God set them free, God changed their life, and somebody ought to run and tell that, well, what? I said I wasn't going to tell nobody, but I what? Just couldn't keep it. Because prayer will deliver And prayer will 
open doors. You know what Paul knew? Paul knew that the success of his ministry was inextricably linked to the prayers of the saints, the prayers of God's people. And when we ask for prayer, what we are doing is acknowledging that we are not in control, that we don't have power. You know, Paul had prayed at least twice for these Thessalonians. He had prayed for them in 2 Thessalonians chapter 1, verse 11 through 12. It says this, Therefore we also pray always for you, that our God would count you worthy of this calling and fulfill all the good pleasure of his goodness and the work of faith with power, that the name of the Lord Jesus may be glorified in you and you in him, according to the grace of our God and the Lord Jesus Christ. You know what? Paul prayed for them that God would be glorified in them and they would be glorified in God. Paul prayed for them. And it's great to know that there is somebody in your life that's praying for you. 2 Thessalonians, the second chapter, verse 16 through 17. Now may our Lord Jesus Christ himself and our God and Father who loved us and and given us everlasting consolation and good hope by grace, comfort your hearts and establish you in every good work. Now look at this, because Paul prayed for the saints. Now watch this. You can't just have a prayer life, and all it is about is your husband and your wife and your kids. That's not a prayer life. That's selfishness. Because the kingdom is so much bigger than your family. It's so much bigger than your nation. It's so much bigger than your job. And if all your prayers are centered around you, something is wrong. Now, point E, I have a biblical responsibility to pray for the saints. Now, without touching their skin, if you can just touch somebody's clothes where you are, if you can touch them, because I have a biblical responsibility to pray for the saints. Now, watch this. When I'm praying for you, I don't have to know all your business. But some of us want to know everybody's business so we can pray for them. Now, how many of y'all agree that all of us have some things going on in our life that we need prayer? Now, what would happen if Calvary just decided for a one second? to touch the person beside us and just pray. Let's try that. Ooh. Ooh. Thank you, Jesus. Ooh. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. You know what Jude says? Thank you. Okay. Jude says, but you, beloved, building up your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. Now watch this. If your prayer in English was level five, your prayer in tongues is level 10. But you, beloved, building up your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost, and so... Now I don't even know what you're dealing with, but I began to intercede in the spirit. Come in this room, God. Come in this room. Change situations. Set people free. Deliver in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Now watch this. To some people, tongues don't make sense because you're so rational. But prayer is not rational. Prayer is spiritual. And you're trying to operate in a spiritual realm from a natural point of view. And you got to get in the spirit. Because God is a spirit and they that worship him must worship him in what? Spirit and in truth. So I don't even know what to pray for. But the scripture says, but the spirit makes intercession with us with groanings can't, that can't even be spoken. 
So I don't even know what I'm praying for half the time. You know, sometimes I'm in my car and I'll, you know, I keep holding on to the wheel. You know, some of us in the car and they say, Jesus, take the wheel and we let the wheel go. But, you know, Darlene, I know that's one of your songs. Jesus, take the wheel. But watch this. Sometimes I'm in my car and I'm driving and I just began to pray in the spirit. And you know, when you're praying in the spirit, you're praying for people that you don't even know need prayer. You know, when you're praying in the spirit, you're praying about situations that you have not yet encountered that's about to happen in your family, that's about to happen on your job, that's about to happen in your life, but you are going ahead because, watch this, prayer goes ahead before you. Do you hear me? It goes ahead before you. You know what? Some of us are living on the prayers of our grandma and granddaddy that's already gone. Pray for us in advance. You know what? And they saw that our deliverance. Now, what happens when somebody has been praying and praying and praying and praying and they never see a situation turn around? And some people say, well, their prayers didn't work. Watch this. It might not be your time or your turn. But, but what did y'all's brother say? Late in the midnight hour, God's going to turn it around. And I believe this, that God can turn some things around that we don't believe can be turned around. I believe that God can fix some things that we believe cannot be fixed. I believe that God is a miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness. And so God, I'm giving you every situation, every care. I'm casting my cares. Whew. The Bible says, cast your cares upon him for he cares for you. Now watch this. Grab all your cares right now. Your money cares, your healing cares, your crazy children cares. Grab them and cast them. It says, cast your cares upon me for I care for you. If he what cares for the how much more? How much more does he love you? Do you know that you are the crown of God's creation? That you are the apple of God's eye? That you are fearfully and wonderfully made? And that my soul knoweth right well? So I don't have a problem figuring out who I am. There's a little girl that had a song a long time ago about in 1985 or 1990 named Dillion Richardson. The song asked the question, if anybody asks you who I am, tell them I'm a child of God. Now watch this. Children of God, pray. I said this in point E. I have a biblical responsibility to pray for the saints. Saints need prayers. Now watch this. The strongest man in the church... The strongest woman in the church will be better by the prayers of the weakest Christian. Now, how many of you know you only one step from failure right now and you don't even realize it because you think you're so strong and your armor is so thick. But how many of you know that everybody in this room has something called an Achilles heel? And you know what? If your Achilles heel gets cut or, if, you know, if your ACL gets taken out, anybody can be taken down. Watch this. It ain't always the big bad wolf that comes and huffs. And what? Huffs. And blows your house down. Sometimes your house is blown down because you built with the wrong materials. Sometimes you thought a song could keep you. But you didn't know you needed some fellowship. Sometimes you thought running could keep you. And you didn't know you needed some prayer. You know what? The saints need the power of Pentecost in the church. And watch this. They said that the reason the screens were going out because of power failure had happened somewhere in the middle of the night. Now watch this. And not only did the power fail in messing up the screens, but a pipe 
has burst on the other side, so we can't go to light groups in that hall because the bathrooms are messed up and the place has flooded. But you know what the Bible says? Good God Almighty. But when the enemy shall come in like a flood, the Spirit of the Lord will raise up a standard against him. And you know what? I believe there's a whole lot of people being flooded by a whole lot of things right now that's trying to take you out, trying to block your blessing. But in the midst of it all, if my people who are called by my name would humble themselves, what? And pray and seek my face. And watch this. And from their wicked way. Now, the Bible says, if my people who were called by my name would humble themselves and pray. Not Satan's people. Not the devil's people. Not the enemy's people. If my people. God said his people have some wicked ways. Now, how many of you can admit that you got some wicked ways? Mm, mm. I, I, okay, let's see, because I didn't, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't get any witnesses. How many of you can admit that you got some wicked ways? Because we act like the only people that got wicked ways are people who are in the streets. But it's some folk in the church that's got some wicked ways that need deliverance. Now watch this. Because you can be saved and not be delivered. You can speak in tongues and not be delivered from anything. Now, my God, have you ever encountered a sanctified person that cursed like crazy? Don't wear makeup. Don't wear pants. But I'll cuss you out so Mm. Now watch this. You know you got to practice because you can't curse that well without doing it every now and then. <laughs> now, if you can curse that well, I mean, by the time you get through cursing me out, I've been cut down all the way to the ground. Now, how many of you know if you're going to be a cursor, you need to practice? <laughs> no, you don't. <laughs> if you're going to be a prayer warrior, you need to practice the act of prayer. You need to practice the act of prayer because God, I show sure need you to come into this room. You know, when we, when I think uh, Whitney started singing, come on in the room. You know what? That's a prayer. Come on, what? In the room. Oh, Jesus. And he and he gives me all of my medicine in my room. Now you know what? Maybe it's a sick room. Maybe it's an employment room. Maybe it's a marriage room. Maybe it's a church room. And the reason that he's not in the room is, is because you haven't asked him to come in the room. Now watch this. I got a biblical responsibility to pray for you, and you have a biblical responsibility to pray for me. I'm getting out of here because it's time for us to go. Look at this, Isaiah 55 and 11. I'm trying to jump. Not like Aretha, jump, jump, jump to it. Just jump to the end of the text. Isaiah 55, 11. So shall my word be that goes forth from my mouth. It shall not return to me what? But it shall accomplish what I please and it shall prosper in the thing for which I sent it. Mm. Now when you start praying the word, the word goes forth and it starts accomplishing the things 
that it was sent to do. Now, that's what God will do. But you know what the Bible says? The Bible says that my people, he said that every tongue that shall rise up against you, not God would condemn, but you would condemn it yourself. You will condemn that. When somebody starts speaking against you and telling you that you will never be anything, that you will never get out of that situation, you have to condemn that yourself. And you know how you get the power to condemn foolishness yourself? You've developed a prayer life. No weapon that is formed against me shall prosper, and every tongue that shall rise up against me, thou shalt condemn. That's Isaiah 54 and 17, and this is the heritage of the servants of the Lord. Now watch this. When you're a servant of the Lord, you can condemn some foolishness that everybody else is messed up over. Oh. So, point F, man is unfaithful, but the unfaithfulness of man cannot stop the faithfulness of God. Great is thy faithfulness, O God, my Father, there is no shadow of turning with thee. Yes, thy hands have, thy, have provided. Great is thy faithfulness, Lord, unto me. Point G, prayer establishes and guards a believer from satanic oppression. It guards us. It keeps us. What would happen if you just turned off 102 and turned off 97 and turned to BBN or put in a worship tape or let Jira play. Let Jira play that he is more than enough. What would happen if you focused on the things of God? Now watch this. Point H, prayer frustrates Satan's plans. You know when the enemy is trying to do crazy stuff and you get to praying, Prayer starts doing things. It frustrates Satan's plans. 1 Corinthians, the 10th chapter, verse 13. Can we read this together? Collectively, one, two, three. No temptation has overtaken you except such as is common to man. But God is what? Faithful. Okay, let's try it again. God is what? Faithful. Who will not allow you to be tempted beyond what you are able, but with the temptation will also make the way of escape that you may be able to bear it. You know what that just says? He's not going to put any more on you than you can bear. And if it's there, you can bear. Good God Almighty. If it's there, you can bear if you stay in prayer. Mm. If it's there, you can bear if you stay in prayer. And maybe the reason that is there is so you'll turn to the Lord in prayer so that you will be able to bear. But see, what you're trying to do is carry this burden on your own. You know, and Deborah Jenkins from the North Carolina a and Fellowship Gospel Choir, they used to sing a song by Reverend Milton Brunson in the Thompson Community Choir. There is no way I can live without you. And they said, I have tried over and over and over. But there is no other way. How many of y'all know that we can't make it on our own? We need prayer. Somebody needs to be praying for us, and we need to be praying for other people. Point I, prayer is a spiritual weapon. And then I want you to get this. Ephesians, the sixth chapter, verse 12. For we do not wrestle against what? But against principalities and powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against what? In what? You know what? Paul was confident in the Lord about the church at Thessalonica. Paul saw them being victors and not victims. You know why Paul saw them as being victors and not victims? Because Paul was praying for the church. He was praying for the church. Paul was confident that they would be obedient and that the enemy that was attacking them would not be successful. Paul prayed that the Lord would direct their hearts. And so our last point today, point J, the saints have a biblical responsibility to pray for me. Now, if Paul asked for prayer 
I'm going to go ahead and be Paul and say, I'm asking you to pray for me. Pray for my mind. Pray for my peace. Pray for my clarity. Pray for my sanctification. Pray for me. I need prayer. But not only do I need prayer, saints, you need prayer too. Let's stand to our feet. We all need prayer. So before all of us come to the altar today, right where you are, lift up your hands toward heaven. God, I thank you that people everywhere are praying for me. And I thank you that I am praying for people everywhere. God, you know every situation in this room. You know every concern. You know every bondage area, every area where deliverance is needed, every miracle that needs to take place, every family that needs to be restored, every resource that needs to be provided. We give it to you right now. And we say, Jaira, you are more than enough. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's give God a hand clap, amen. Maybe someone after hearing the word of the Lord today has decided to give your life to Jesus Christ. If that person is you, if that family is you, we're going to ask you to step forward and come on to the altar. Or if you're here today and you say, I want to make Calvary my church home. I love this church. I want to become a part of this ministry. If that person is you, wherever you are, if that family is you, come on and be a part of what God is doing here. Is there one? Is there one? Amen. Well, let's give God another hand clap. Amen. Remember, our life groups are happening. If you're interested in being a facilitator for one of our life groups, we are meeting at 950 in the Welcome Center. Thank you, and have a great day.